Wanji baba. Ya? Wakum saya mula matul lab. Hmm. 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 Ati yangi ya njoku bie kunchari kwa WhatsApp. Nina WhatsApp ya zeko. Nina kubikweleza. Nina kubikweleza. Chobato sobe physics. Chobato sobe physics. Kari, kari, kama izi class. Good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon, Tisa. Uh, you're welcome once again. Yesterday, I discussed the introduction of thermodynamics. And today, I said we shall kick off with what we call the molar heat capacity. Molar heat capacity. And molar heat capacity is the amount of heat energy that one requires to change the temperature of one mole of a gas. So that's why the word molar comes from. So if you're changing the temperature of only one mole of the gas, then you're looking at what we call molar heat hour capacity. So this is the amount of heat energy. This is the amount of heat energy required to change. The temperature of one mole of a gas or one mole of a substance by one Kelvin. Now, whenever a change in temperature occurs for a substance, eh, in most cases it is accompanied with change in pressure and volume. And uh, for gases, a change in temperature would produce a large change in pressure and a very large change in volume. Uh, if you look at an example of, say, cooking oil, where cooking oil sits, which is cold, it's not the same volume of cooking oil when it is hot, yeah? Because we have seen cooking oil from viscosity. Cooking oil is more viscous when it is cold and less viscous when it is warm. So those two different liquids, one is viscous, one is less viscous, they do not uh, occupy the same volume. So the reason why the other one has changed state from being viscous to less viscous, is because temperature has increased and thus the temperature has increased for the substance. So that's why we are saying that when the temperature of a substance increases, it can lead to an increase in, or it can lead to a variation in pressure. At the same time, it can also lead to a variation in volume. Then uh, also we have solids, solids and liquids. For solids and liquids, the changes are too small and neg neglected or negligible. So meaning when you look at a gas, the gas, once you have the change in temperature, the, the difference or the variations in pressure, those variations are going to be very huge. The one for oil, it can be a very small change. One might not notice it so much because this one is less viscous, this is more viscous. But when it is a gas and you increase the temperature of the gas, it will expand. Mm -hmm. When you reduce the temperature of the gas, it will contract, yeah? When you compress the gas, where it is passing, as you're compressing it, you will find that it is hot, meaning the molecules at that point gain a lot of kinetic energy. As a result, there was an increase in temperature at that state or at that, at that place. So it regards that when you look at a situation of having an increase in temperature, but the temperature you're increasing is for a gas, then a gas will have a drastic or a very big change in pressure, it will have a very big change in volume. 
Of course, if the pressure increases, then more forces are going to be exerted, more pressure is going to be exerted on the walls in which the gas is contained. And that leads to the expansion of the volume in which the gas is contained. So when the pressure increases, the volume is most likely to also increase. While the reverse is true, when the pressure is reduced, then the gases or the molecules of the gas tend to contract in and the size of the occupation of the gas will definitely reduce. So in some of these items, we have different types of molar heat capacities and uh, we can talk about some of them. Types of molar heat capacities. So types of molar heat capacities, we have the first one. We have what we call the molar heat capacity at a constant volume. Molar heat capacity at a constant volume. This one is called CV in brackets. Molar heat capacity at a constant volume. That is the first one. The second one is called molar heat capacity at a constant pressure. Molar heat capacity at constant pressure. This one is always CP. Keep reading your bike around there. To get tired, you come and take some juice and you go back. Molar heat capacity at a constant pressure. Normally that one is uh, indicated as CP. Then we also what we have molar heat, uh, before that, uh, you'll find that the other one occurs at a constant volume, meaning the volume is not changing. While this one which is occurring at a constant pressure means the pressure is not changing as we shall see the definitions. So by definition, case one, molar heat capacity at a constant volume is the amount of, uh, heat energy required to change the temperature of one mole of the gas by one Kelvin at a constant volume. So it's known as the amount of the heat energy required to change the temperature <clears throat> of one mole of a gas at a con one mole of a gas by one Kelvin at a constant, constant volume, meaning the volume you had before is the same volume you have after. Once you have changed the temperature of the gas by one Kelvin, then the second one, uh, this one we have called it CV and is measured in joules per mole per Kelvin. Then we can deduce the second one as the amount of heat energy required to change the temperature of one mole of the gas by one Kelvin at a constant pressure. That is CP. Molar heat capacity at a constant pressure is the amount of the heat energy required amount of heat energy required to change change the temperature one mole of a gas by one Kelvin at a constant pressure, at a constant pressure. So that is our CP, 
the other one was CV at a constant volume. So for CP, it occurs at a constant what? Pressure. Now, you'll find that um, if you consider for case one, we, we are seeing already that heat energy supplied is equal to the heat energy, which is for work done internally, plus work done by the system, which work done by the system is the same as external work done by the system. Okay, so uh, work done at a constant volume because we are saying, for example, if I look at CP. CV at a constant volume. At a constant volume, you see that the volume is not changing. Eh? So if the volume is not changing, then it means that the change in heat, which is supplied, would give us internal energy plus. Remember, DW, we got it yesterday as a change in work done you are equal to p dv which is pressure times change in volume so this will be plus p times change in volume but if the volume is constant then it means the change in volume is zero so that means the heat energy supplied it purely does only work which is due to internal work done and this work done internally can be got from n CV times the small change in temperature, whereby N is the number of moles. Yeah. Now, just like the idea of uh, heat energy being equal to heat capacity, because here molar constant, molar heat capacity behaves like specific heat capacity. Whereby, if you remember, molar specific heat capacity, it was always given by MC change in temperature. Now, here the mass is. We are looking at a mass of one mole. So if there are many moles, their mass will be N. One mole, one mole is one which has a, a gram of a mass of one gram, I think. Eh? From chemistry, I don't remember the, the, the chemistry very well. Yeah. But uh turn off the volume. Mm -hmm. But ideally the N stands in for the number of moles. Then the C stands in for this same C, whereby if this is specific heat capacity here, it is molar heat capacity. Then the change in temperature corresponds to the change in theta, as we have already seen from all level. So the heat supplied would therefore be equal to N CV delta T. And this is for the case when we have molar heat capacity at a constant volume. Then for molar heat capacity at a constant pressure, that is molar heat capacity, can't play from the page. Nabut. No. At a constant pressure, the heat would be given by N C P times delta T. Now, you would find that questions can come asking you. Why is molar heat capacity at a constant pressure greater than molar heat capacity at a constant volume? Okay. So they can ask you to explain why I sent some notes today and that explanation is there. So let me just talk about it. This is CV. Why CP is greater than CV? And this is because at a constant pressure, heat energy supplied is partly used as internal energy and also used as external work done. While at a constant volume, all the heat required eh, is taken in to raise the internal 
energy since no external work is done. So in the first case, there was no external work done. In this second case, because this equation was not depending on, on uh, when you have delta two is equal to delta u plus PDV, you see that the pressure here was constant. So even here, the internal energy is not affected. So it means the total heat energy in this case depends on external work done. This is the external work done. And then this is the internal energy. So you need a lot of energy to do work internally and to do external work when you're using molar heat capacity at a constant pressure. Yet for molar heat capacity at a constant volume, we have seen that the external work done is not utilized or we do not do work externally. All the work, all the heat energy we have is just to do work internally or which is energy used to do internal work. So that is why molar heat capacity at a constant pressure is always greater than molar heat capacity at a constant volume. So with that, we have to look at this special derivation. The derivation of the change in CP minus CV is equal to R. This is a very common illustration. They can ask you to derive it. It is very common in looking at uh, we shall see adiabatic uh, changes that can occur when the temperature or when the volume or when the pressures are changing or are remaining constant. It's a very sensitive equation to use. So we can consider in deriving this equation, you can consider any number of moles of a gas at a pressure P. If I consider any number of moles of a gas, at a pressure P, yeah, heated so that the temperature increases by delta T. Delta T becomes the temperature increment. Uh, at a constant volume, And then at a constant pressure. So you look at both conditions at a constant volume and at a constant pressure. So to start with, at constant volume, at a constant volume, what is going to happen is, you know at a constant volume, we do not do external work done. We only do work due to the internal requirements of the system. So we only have internal energy. So ideally the change in work done is going to be equal to work done internally due to the internal energy plus work done due to the external work we need to do. But we have already seen that the external work done at a constant volume is zero. Why? Because the external work done is got from P to V times the delta V, which delta V is actually what? Delta V is actually zero. So this means we shall have the internal work done got from NCP delta T is equal to work done internally. So this would be case one or equation one. Then at constant pressure, at constant pressure, what are we going to have when we have a constant pressure? When we have constant pressure, we do work internally and also we do work externally, so of the system. So that means we shall have delta Q is equal to delta U plus delta W, which is the same as delta U plus P delta V. With this reason, we can confirm that if the gas is taken to be an ideal gas, I think let me rub off here so that we have consistency. If the gas is an ideal gas, then it obeys 
the ideal gas equation. Eh? If you recall the ideal gas equation, it was saying PV over T is equal to R, or is equal to any R, or PV T over T is equal to any R, as I'm going to state it here. So with the ideal gas equation, if the ideal gas obeys that equation, then this is supposed to be true. All right, your hand was up. Well, I didn't. No, I think it well, was. Yeah? Yeah. No, it's yet okay. For the ideal gas, PV is equal to NR at T. Or PV is always equal to a constant. It's always equal to a constant. So if PV is equal to a constant, it means that if we have pressure and a change in the volume, then this should be coming from N is a molar number of moles, R is the molar, R is a constant, and then we, which is the molar gas constant, then T will be a change in what? In temperature. So it means P, the V, is going to be equal to any R delta T. And this is the same as the external work what? Done. Now, because we had already seen that Chu is the same as equation, uh, Chu internal is the same as equation what? Equation one. And I think I made a mistake. This was supposed to be CV. Mm, have you seen that mistake I made? It was supposed to be, this was N. CV delta T. So that is the case. The total heat energy supplied would be NCP delta T is equal to the internal work done internally plus external work done when we have molar heat capacity at a constant pressure. So this is the same as our delta watt two or the heat supplied. So with this, I'll have N CP delta T is equal to, the internal energy is equal to N C V delta T plus the external work done is N R delta T. So if I divide through, by delta T, I'll have, by delta T and N, I'll have CP is equal to CV plus R. Therefore, CP minus CV is equal to R. And with this, I would have deduced the molar gas equation, molar heat capacity at a constant pressure and a constant volume equation, which is CP minus CV is equal to R. So that's the equation we are deducing. So they can ask you to prove it, unless someone has a question on how to have, we have come about it. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, please. Um, the at constant volume, we got change in volume as zero. Why didn't we get the pressure as zero also? At that very instant, eh? it's because yeah. the pressure had an equation. Actually, it is here on this very line. Look at this very next line I'm supposed to wrap. Eh? I'm having delta Q is equal to delta U plus PDV. In that case, P was not varying. What was changing was the volume. So if the volume was changing, this is the change in volume. Yeah, the volume was changing. Then we have already said we are dealing with constant volume. If we are dealing with a constant volume, it means that when the volume changes, the change will be zero. Yeah? So the volume will be changing, it will be giving us zero. So it means that if the volume, were, for example, if the volume is constant, like I've said, and the volume is 20 centimeters cubed, after dealing with whatever I've done, maybe heated the, the gas, expanded the gas, 
and the volume will remain the same, which is 20 centimeters cubed, then the change will be 20 minus 20, which change would give us zero. That is why the change in volume had to become what? Zero. Is that better? Yes, teacher. <laughs> Okay, so that's the derivation, guys. Uh, you'll also have it in your notes, but try it out on your own as you copy down the notes. Okay. You should also note this. We have what we call the ratio of the principal molar heat capacities. And that ratio is called gamma. Gamma is CP over CV. And this is called the ratio of the principal molar heat what capacities so the next definition is what we are going to call monatomic gases monoatomic when you finish the battery and i've not yet put for you that thing i don't know mm -hmm. Don't finish the battery, I have to put for you things. I put in myself, please. You have downloaded. Mm -hmm. I knew. It. Okay, we have what we call monatomic gases. We have also what we call diatomic gases. Uh, to start with monatomic gases, just like you hear the word mono. What does the word mono signify? One. It means that when you are looking at monatomic gases, these are gases that have only one atom. Okay, so monatomic gases, these are gases. These are gases that have where each molecule with only one atom. Remove the old ones and put new ones. Eh? So, for such gases, the internal energy would be three over two n r delta t. But because we are saying we have only one mole, one atom. Recall that also heat energy, which was internally uh, catering for the heat energy of the entire system, was also being given by, for example, the constant volume. Internal energy was N CV delta what? Delta T. So because these two are the same, when you equate them, we shall realize three N R delta T over two is equal to N CV delta T. So we can lose delta T with this one. We can lose the N. Ideally, the N is the same. Eh? In this case, we are assuming small N is the same as capital N. They are both talking about number of what? Moles. So I lose N with N. So finally, what do I attain? Finally, I'll have CV is equal to three over two of R. Now, if you go back to our molar heat capacity equation, which is CP minus CV is equal to big R, you would see that CV, I mean CP is equal to CV plus R, which CV we have seen is three over two, times big R plus big R, and ideally this would give us five big R over two. 
Where big R is the molar gas constant. Eh? So mm -hmm. we shall have CP molar heat capacity at the constant pressure is equal to 5 over 2 of R. This is for what? For a monatomic gas. Okay. Why is it monatomic? It's because we have only one atom for a given molecule. So that's why the ends had to be the same. So for that reason, we shall have gamma in this case. Remember, gamma is Cp over Cv, whereby Cp is 5 over 2 of R divided by Cv, which is 3 over 2 of R. When I lose the R and I lose the 2, I remain with 5 over 3. Gamma is equal to 1.4. This is the standard constant. I never wanted to always just scram it and bring it on board. I had to show you how gamma becomes 1.4. I mean, 1 point, it's not 1.4. Kaichera, this gives me what? 1.667. Eh? Gamma is 1.7. Yes, uh, 1.7. So in case you are substituting for gamma ahead, as we shall see, gamma will be coming in as 1.667 for a monatomic what? Gas. Now, a condition is going to come in for a diatomic gas. Hmm? How do you define a diatomic molecule? Oh God, I mean a diatomic gas. Someone please try out. I beg your pardon on the question. What is the diatomic gas? Because now after looking at a monatomic gas, we are going to look at the diatomic what? Diatomic gases. It is a gas that has Molecules with more than with more than one atom. If you say with more than one atom, you are not being specific. Only the word die stands in for what? For two. For two, not so. So it should be strictly what? Two. Yes, gentlemen, how are you defining? I was saying these are gases that have molecules with only two atoms. Correct. The gases with molecules that have only two atoms. Okay, so with that, what does that mean? Uh, for such gases, their internal work done is going to be equal to five out of two N of big R delta T. Those of us who are with us earlier on, when we are looking at the ideal gas equations, we talked about some of these items. So I'm just re retrieving. Yeah, I don't know whether time will allow us someday and then we go over them again for some people to know where they come from. Yet, uh, we know also heat energy is given by for internal heat energy at a constant volume, it is N CV delta T. So whereby in this case, when you equate the two equations, N CV delta T will be equal to five over two N R delta T. Then we can divide by delta T, we can divide by N on both sides. So I'll lose delta T, I'll lose the N. Lose delta T, I'll lose the N. So with this reason, we shall have CV is equal to five over two of R. So having attained CV as five over two of R, why they can, they can ask you to do it, to show that gamma is 1.667 for a monatomic molecule, to show that gamma is 1.4 for diatomic molecule. I mean, for diatomic gases. Eh? Then for this case, CP, remember, is the same as CV plus R, which is five over two R plus big R 
which will give us what? Seven big R over two. Now, because gamma is CP over CV, this is going to be seven over two R divided by five over two R. I can lose the R, I can lose the two. This will give me seven over five. And the answer is 1.4. This is the most common one for diatomic gases. Eh? They are very common examples. So gamma for diatomic gases is always equal to 1.4. Then gamma for monatomic gases, Therefore, monatomic gases is 1.667. Then we also have what we call polyatomic gases. This one, you look for it, go and do research. The third one, this was the second. This was the first one. The third, let me sketch it here. Polyatomic. Who can define what polyatomic gases can be? Someone try out what could polyatomic gases be? Gases, gases with molecules that, that are more, okay, molecules that have more than two atoms. Gases with molecules that contain more than two atoms correct therefore when you do the derivation that is an assignment for you guys when you do the derivation you will see that gamma for this case is 1.3 so you try that out go and research and look for the heat internal energy of a gas that has got polyatomic molecules and see what the internal energy is supposed to be like in terms of the molar constant R. So with that, I want us to try out an example before we can close. So that next time we shall go for gas changes, which is isobaric, isovolumetric, isothermal, and adiabatic. So I want to give an example, unless someone has a question on these derivations. Someone has a concern. Teacher, you once spoke of, hey, I posted the test. I posted a seminar set of questions, eh? And I told you to do questions. There were three numbers there. I told you to try them out. Did you see them on fluid mechanics? No, teacher. I said you go to my Google class. Mine, my personal one, Ruwama Hamza. I sent the link on the WhatsApp group. Okay. If I didn't, if you didn't get it, then get back to me in my inbox. Okay, teacher. The numbers I sent them. The question is quite a long one. It says nitrogen gas. In an expandable. container is raised from zero degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius at a constant pressure. Of 4.0 times 10 power, five pascals. The total heat added is 
3.0 times 10 power 4 joules. Find 1. The gas. Sorry, not the gas. The number of of moles of the gas to the change in the internal energy of the gas three The work done by the gas given in brackets molar heat capacity molar heat capacity yes sir see now I'm bad in charm class Any answers? Molar heat capacity. Of nitrogen. At a constant pressure. Is 29.1 joules. Per mole. Per Kelvin. We don't know. So that's the question. It says nitrogen gas is in an expandable container, meaning the container can expand. Uh, is raised from zero degrees slicers to 50 degrees slicers at a constant pressure. At a constant pressure. Um, of four exponent five pasquales. Then they have said the total heat added is three point zero. Find the number of moles of the gas, the change in internal energy of the gas, the work done by the gas. So the first one says the number of moles of the gas. So from Cp minus Cv is equal to R, Cp has been given as what? We have been given Cp, which is 29.1. The molar gas constant R is 8.31. So we shall have 29.1. This one is always a standard constant, given on the title page. Or it can be given in the equation is equal to 8.31. So can we get CV be 29.1 plus 8.31? Calculator, what is CV? Twenty point twenty seven. Twenty point seven. Seven what? Seven. Nine. Okay, point eight. Joules per mole per Kelvin. Then we shall have. They gave us the change in temperature, which is going to be fifty minus zero, which is fifty what? Degrees Celsius. Whether it's in Kelvin, it will be still the same change. Eh? Now, they have given us the heat supplied, which was three times 10 power four joules. And the pressure is four times 10 power five pasqualas. So at a constant pressure,
You would find that? It gave us 15 degrees. I gave you what? What did you say that I gave you? Fifteen degrees Celsius. It is fifty. Sorry. It's fifty. So the pressure is constant, so heat energy would be equal to N. Cp times the change in temperature. So since we are looking for N, it will be the heat energy supplied out of Cp times change in temperature, giving us three times 10 power four divided by our Cp, which is 29.1 times 50. How many number of moles do we have? Yeah? What do you get? Teacher, um, I have 51,546. You have what? I have 51,000. 50 times 20 okay, let me repeat this. is 1,000. So you have 29 times 50. Quite a value. Twenty point six one nine. Approximately twenty one. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, this one internal energy is going to be got from twenty point six one times CV, which is twenty point eight times the change in temperature, which is fifty. Answer, what answer do we get? Now, work done by the gas, remember I told you, it's the same as the external work done, which is the difference between the heat energy supply minus the heat energy required to do internal work. So that is uh, delta W. So if it's delta W, you know it can be attained from 
heat energy supplied delta q is equal to the internal energy delta u plus the external work done which is the work done by the gas so delta w will be delta q minus delta u we have already got delta q which is the heat supplied which was Total heat, total heat added, which was 3.0 times 10 power four minus the internal energy, which is going to be what? What answer have we got for the internal energy? Here. 21,517. 21,000? 517.6. Are you sure? Yeah. Someone else? 21,434. Correct. 0.4. 0.4.8. 434.4. Ah. Yes, teacher. Point four. So it's, a, so it's a better answer. It's correct one, eh? Two, one, four, three, three four, four, point four, point four. Joe's. So subtract here twenty one, four, three, four, point four. What is the external work done by the system or by the gas? What do we have the difference? Oh, there was some work done. Eight, five, six, five, five, six. Five hundred sixty-five. Six, five point six. So that is the external work done or the work done by the system or by the gas. So that is the answer we wanted. So with that, we have come to the introduction of using uh, the ratio of CP to CV. We have introduced uh, molar heat capacities that is at constant pressure and constant volume. They are going to be very common illustrations in the next items, among which includes uh, gas changes, among which, the first gas change we can talk about is isovolumetric process, which process occurs at a constant volume because it's, say, it's called isovolumetry from the word volume. Then we have another one, isobaric process. I sent all these definitions to you. Isobaric process is one which occurs at a constant pressure. Then we shall also discuss isothermal process as some of the processes we are going to look at ahead. So as you do research on the internet, you can read about them and you have a better glimpse of what actually takes place. So isothermal, like you hear the word thermal, it comes from temperature. This is the process which occurs at a constant what? Temperature. And uh, this process obeys Boyle's law, as we shall see, whereby Boyle's law states that PV is equal to what? Constant. Then the last process or change there we shall look at will be called the adiabatic expansion process adiabatic or adiabatic process or expansion or compression process it can be an expansion it can be a compression whereby that process is one where heat is not allowed to leave or to come into the system yeah but we can have a change in volume we can have a change in pressure we can have a change in temperature that is what we look at when we are dealing with adiabatic processes 
So that process where heat is not allowed to come in the system or to leave the system, but you're having changes taking place is what we call the adiabatic process. Then these ones which do change as a result of a specific item, like if temperature changes, it becomes an isothermal process. If pressure changes, it becomes an isobaric process. If volume changes, it becomes an isovolumetric what? process. So those are the processes that will follow next week. So you go read about them, look at some of the conditions you require to get them, and then from there, we shall see how best we can have whatever we need. I wish we can go back to school when at least we have finished adiabatic expansion. You'll go back when you're very good uh, students of paper one, if you have been serious. But if you've not been serious, they will still look magical when you get back to school. Any questions before I can close? Time for sub math. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Um, when we round off, like, you get different answers. When you round off, eh? So, what exactly do we round to, to two decimal places or three? Physics, you can round off to one decimal place. It is okay. They are not so, so strict on decimal places. And then when you come to items like number of charges, number of moles, when they ask for those numbers, eh? You cannot get 2.6 moles, no. They are discrete, eh? So you round off the six to 21, right? Yeah, thank you, Tisha. Okay, with that, we can stop there. Thank you. Hmm? Didn't even say hello to my students. Hi.